spend some time on understanding the dotnet philosophy the overall concept of dotnet framework right we tried understanding the concept of platforms and uh, the frameworks how dotnet fits into that and then we moved on to see how exactly the dotnet code can be written using c sharp language precisely Right, so towards the end of the day, we were working with the C sharp language fundamentals, and that is what which continues over here. So instead of just focusing on the fundamentals now, we will be moving on to discuss about the object-oriented programming in C sharp, various features like uh, how do we work with classes and something on access control, methods and properties, where concept of methods we saw a bit yesterday itself, but still. There are a few more things that we need to understand about methods. We will be looking at that today. And the concept of properties, it is completely new if you have never worked with any Microsoft programming language. And based on this uh, property concept itself, we have a feature called as auto implemented properties, which was introduced in C sharp version 3. Then we also have the concept of constants and read only fields and then inheritance polymorphism and followed by more on the access control with respect to the inherited classes with respect to the assemblies and then some more features of c-sharp language which were added in the later versions of c-sharp so like something called as implicitly type local variables the uh, use of lambda expressions where we are going to talk about delegates and events precisely then the process of garbage collection, how it works and how C sharp can basically leverage the same. And then something interesting where uh, these days, if you know, most of the processors are multi-core processors, right? So how do we take advantage of the multi-core processor in our system? The way how we write the code conventionally targets only one processor core. But if we have a powerful processor with multi cores, why not take the advantage of the same? For that reason, in .NET 4, Microsoft came up with a separate extension for .NET framework by the name Task Parallel Library or TPL. And that's where they provided several features like the class called as Task, the class called as Parallel, and then the feature that leverages these implementations uh, at the base code level itself with the help of the keywords like async and await. So let's start. <clears throat> so before we actually jump on to discuss about the implementation of classes and objects, we need to have a quick recap on what exactly the object oriented programming follows or what all principles are there right and it all starts with what is an object natural question right we are saying object oriented programming so if we don't know what is an object understanding what is object oriented programming will be difficult how do we define usually i get the definition like it is an instance of a class or it could be a real world entity is it only that or is it something more than that? Anybody? Say when you talk about object oriented programming, you have to keep the computers and the programming and any technology related thing aside. You have to be focusing on your day to day life. The real world stuff only. Which some non technical person can also think of and can understand if you're talking to him or her. Yes, anybody? Hi, 
uh, sir it can be said like it is an instance through which we can use the class methods and its properties like the classes can be considered like a representation mm -hmm. and the object uh, brings it into identity with uh, like uh, since we say it's object oriented programming so the objects are uh, are performing the functions in the main yeah so correct nothing wrong with this but I guess this uh, description is more technical. As I said, you have to be more non-technical in understanding this. Uh, uh, <clears throat> if you think of class as a skeleton, mm -hmm. uh, blueprint, uh, mm -hmm. then then the object is the actual implementation of that skeleton or the blueprint. OK, so do you think a uh, layman can understand this? Uh, yes, we can put this in the, in this way. Uh, if you think of the uh, plan for our house, how we can build our house. So if we can make a blueprint, then that mm -hmm. uh, then that we can say it as a class. And if we actually build our house uh, with all the bedrooms and all of that, then we mm -hmm. can think of our house as an object. OK, so almost on the right track, but uh, you used a term called as class over here. Uh, yes. My question doesn't have the mention of class anywhere. OK, so the class or blueprint uh, in uh, if we talk of if we talk in technical way, then we can say it as a class in a non technical way. We can say mm -hmm. it as a skeleton or a blueprint. OK, so let's be clear in real world. There is nothing called as class as such. In real world, everything is object. Whether it is blueprint or the implementation, it is an object. Understood? <laughs> Understood? Now, when we say which object, so if I'm talking about pen, which pen? If I'm talking about laptop, which laptop? If I'm talking about car, which car? With that answer, it actually is the specific object. Understood? So everything is object. Even the blueprint also is an object only. So that way, if we want to understand what object is, an object is some entity, any entity rather, which has some of the things that I'm going to list over here. The object needs to have an identity, first of all. Do you agree? What is identity? Something by which I can uniquely identify the entity. Like in a database table, the role of primary key is basically to provide the entity to each row. Yes or no? Primary key provides identity to each row. Yes or no? Yes, sir. If you own some vehicle. What is your identity of that vehicle? Registration number. Registration number. If you are driving some vehicle, you must have a license. What is the identity of that license? Is it your name or is it something else? Number, I think. License also has got a number, unique number. Am I right? Yes. Which contains the information about which RTO has issued that license in which year it has been issued, and then the serial number or something like that. Correct? Usually the format is like that. Yes? Now, on day one, we spoke about the asset tracking number, service tag number on your laptops. Correct? What exactly is that? That is also the identity of your laptop. Correct? That's what we discussed. Your company identifies that this laptop is with this person with the help of asset tracking number only. Yes or no? So what is it? Identity. Correct. Now you purchase any household item for which there is some warranty provided. If something goes wrong, that item is not working the way it should, you will launch a complaint. What company will ask for you for uh, from you? 
they will be asking for some serial number or something. Am I right? So that they can access all the details about the sale from where you purchased, when you purchased, whether the warranty is on or not, and then the next course of action will be decided. It also helps them understand what all uh, parts they need to carry, depending on the problem that you have shared with them. Yes? Yeah. Correct? Now, everywhere, basically, you have some sort of serial number. Even if you talk about clothes, when you go to buy the clothes, there are some codes associated with them based on which the billing happens. Am I right? Yeah. If you go to some supermarket or malls, probably there are barcodes associated with it, which they scan and the billing happens. So that barcode also contains some identity for that particular item. Am I right? Yes. If you look at medicines, medicines also come with some batch number and some more details. Right? So that the chemist can identify which medicine you are actually looking for. Yes or no? We are in a meeting. The meeting also has got an ID. Yes or no? Yes. Almost everything nearby has identity. You also have an identity. In your organization, you have employee ID. On the top of everything, probably you must have the other card number. Right? Some or the other way, you have some identity which can be uniquely identified because your name may not be unique. There may be people with the exact same name as yours. So how do we uniquely identify a person? Some identity. It could be license number. It could be voter card number. It could be Aadhaar card number. It could be PAN card number. Some identity. Usually required, like if you are entering an airport, they, they ask for some government provided identity. Any of these things work. Yes or no? Yeah. OK, so. The object, first of all, needs to be uniquely identified. And that's what is provided by identity. Why this unique? identification is required so that we can zero in on which exact object we are actually talking about and which object we are looking to target to work upon am i right <clears throat> yes yeah what is next every object will have some characteristics right Like, there are a few objects that we discussed with the previous point. From there itself, you can tell me the characteristics. Let's talk about ourselves. We have name, we have some address, local address, permanent address, we have contact number, email ID, the other basic details, right? If we go in depth, maybe we can talk about height, weight, color, hair color, and so on. Am I right? What are these? These are characteristics of a human being. You talk about any object, every object will have some or the other characteristics. If you talk about your laptop, which processor it has, how much RAM it has, what amount of storage it has, whether the storage is a is an SSD or an HDD, that will be decided by the characteristic only. Am I right? What kind of screen it has? What is the size? What is the resolution? These all are characteristics for the laptop. Correct? 
If I talk about a simple object like pen, what could be the characteristics of this? The most basic characteristic here would be its color. Am I right? The other characteristic would be type, whether it's a ballpoint pen, gel pen, ink pen, or a digital pen. Correct? Yes. Okay, so just think of any object around you. You will find there are some characteristics associated with it. Your house also has got a uh, uh, number of characteristics, right? Maybe the ID is defined by the uh, flat number or the house number, something like that. But then in which locality it is present, which street it is present, these all are basically the other characteristics. What is the total area of your house? How big it is? How many rooms it has got? These all are characteristics. Am I right? One of the characteristics item only plays the role of identity. So this actually is used over here. There could be a number of characteristics, one of which may be capable of uniquely identifying the object. So one of the characteristics become the candidate for providing identity for that object. Do you get it? These characteristics, usually an object-oriented terminology, is called as state. State of an object. So you have object where you are just talking about you know the blueprint as we are discussing when you say there is a state of an object that means you are talking about a specific object where you have the instance in place understood yes yes what is the third thing? If I'm having object, will it just have the state values or characteristic values? In computing world, this is something that represents your data. Is that enough? No, we need something which works upon that data, correct? So could you please repeat? What I'm saying is, if you have an object, is the role of object limited to just hold the data? If I talk about human being, just identifying human being and talking about the characteristic, is that enough? Is that what human being is? No, human being speaks. Human being can talk. I mean, human being can walk, can run, can do many things, can write, can use various devices, can interact with the other objects, yes or no? Basically, what I'm talking about is, there are actions associated with every object, yes or no? Your laptop can switch on, can switch off, can compute, can store, some information, can retrieve any stored information. Yes or no? Yes or no? Yes. Think about a bank account. What all things comes to your mind when you talk about bank account as an object? What you can do with bank account? Three most important things I want to know. What you can do with bank account? You can check your balance. Yeah. You can deposit amount into it. Yes. You can withdraw the amount from it. Minimum things if I talk about. These three things are expected from any bank account. There may be additional features also, but these are the three minimum things required. Yes or no? Yes. 
right? So this is what we call as responsibility. If I talk about car, what is the responsibility of car? Take the user from point A to point B. That point A and point B could be decided by the user. Yes? Yeah. So that's the responsibility. In order to go from point A to point B, car needs to provide some features to the user so that actually it can go from point A to point B. Yes or no? What are the features? Can you tell me? To turn the car in any direction, you have steering. To make it move, you have clutch and gear combination along with accelerator. Accelerator precisely works on increasing, decreasing speed. Gear basically decides what power and torque should be used. Clutch controls the gear. There is a brake which helps you stop the car. Yes or no? Before that, you need some starter feature also. Because if engine is not started, no matter which other feature you use, there will be nothing happening. Yes or no? Yeah. So, in terms of computing or programming, what is that which will be representing this? Identity and characteristics can be probably identified by or implemented by using the fields and the properties. What about responsibility? Let me put that. This can be handled by using fields or properties or both. What about responsibility? Don't you think the role of responsibility will be played by methods? If bank account is a class, in order to operate your bank account, don't you need method like deposit, withdraw, check balance? Yes or no? Yes, we do. Yes. Because that is how you will be accessing the features, correct? Then there is a fourth thing which also comes in. Something called as behavior. What is it? Behavior is something about how the object responds to the change in the state of its characteristics. Like car is in engine stopped mode. When I put the key in and try to start it, if it is button based starter, I push the button. What happens? The engine gets started, right? So when I push the button or when I turn the key, what is happening? There is some event happening, uh, uh, event getting raised, right? Some notification is getting created. Some message is going. And someone has to take action on it. Someone has to handle that particular message. Yes or no? Turning the key actually is carrying the electric current somewhere. Push button is also doing the same thing. Yes or no? Completing the circuit, passing the current which ignites the fuel and with the help of that, the engine gets started. Yes or no? Yes or no? Yes. Another example would be if I call out a name over here. Say, for example, 
I call Siddharth. That's a message for Siddharth, right? So what you will do, Siddharth? If I say Siddharth, are you there? What will be next say, course of action? Yes, I say I'm present. Or if it is just Siddharth, then? I say yes. There might be some more input coming for you, right? It could be a question. It could be some clarification about the question that you have asked. Yes. Or it could be something like, are you completed with the activity, right? depends on exact message which is coming to you. Am I right? Yes. So what you are doing is you are responding to the call of your name, correct? In yes. any case. Yes. And I guess this is the truth for anyone. Now, this is the matter of human being, but when it comes to the objects, there also there is some messaging, right? Yes. Like when I say deposit, in bank account. That functionality is called from the responsibility. Don't you think the object must be notified that the balance has changed? And actually the balance must be updated there. There is a message coming in that, okay, uh, uh, I'm depositing say 50,000 bucks. Don't you think the message should go to the object which ultimately handled by object and object updates its state? It could be vice versa also. Balance changed. There has to be a trigger of an SMS or email, which is the reality. Whenever the balance changes, when you get the account credited with some amount or debited with some amount, don't you get an SMS or email or both? Do you get it or not? Yes, sir. And why that is important? Because by default, you come to know what is the balance in your account. And whatever the transaction is happening, that is an authorized transaction. Right? This is very, very important, especially with the debit operations. When your account is actually being accessed to deduct some money from it. That is what the debit operation is, correct? Correct? Yes. So that's what the behavior is. How the object responds to the change in state of the current object or maybe some other object. So in short, I can say how object responds to the message. This is implemented programmatically with the help of something called as events. Understood? Understood? Yes. OK, now this is all about an object. Now, what is object oriented programming? Where each and every thought and planning depends or. Is done. By having object in the central place. Everything revolves around object. You think an object, 
you code an object. What is the advantage of it? As we saw, the object is actually something from real world. Understanding of the problem and coming up to the solution becomes much more easy if we can relate everything, every complex problem to the real world stuff, because mostly we will be writing the program to solve some real world problem only. Yes or no? You talk about healthcare application, you talk about banking application, you talk about insurance domain, you talk about any domain, any business domain. You write the program basically to solve your day to day needs only. Yes or no? Yes. So don't you think if we can think in terms of the day to day stuff, it will actually help us understand and implement the code much more easily. Understanding logic also will be easy. And at the end, maintenance and man uh, management of that particular code also will be easy. Because everyone is clear, OK, by name itself, I know that, OK, what is expected from this object? You put your expectations there, correct? Yes. That's what object oriented programming is. Programming. Plan. And. Done by having object in the central place is object oriented program. Understand? Yes. Yes. Now let's talk about what are the pillars of object oriented programming. The first one here is any idea? abstraction. Second one is. What we know as encapsulation. Third one is inheritance. And then the fourth one is. Polymorphism. What is abstraction here? Abstraction is the process of identifying the required thing. When I say required things means what? In terms of a program, these required things will be. What data this object is going to have? What data will be accessible to users? How that data is going to be modified? What events this object is going to have? I mean, again, all about these four things. Identity characteristics responsibility and behavior at the end. So you just talk about the required things. You don't talk about how the implementation is going to be done. That is abstraction. Understand? Yeah. Yes. OK, so let's talk about one case. 
I want to build a computer system for myself. At the first level, when I'm in the stage of abstraction, what I'll be thinking of? Assembled computer I'm looking for. I'm going to need a monitor. This is the specification, like uh, 19 inches or 21 inches screen with this so and so resolution. Right, so I'll get one. I'll need the cables for connecting it, including power and display. Then I'll need a keyboard, I'll need a mouse. If my requirement says I, it needs to be a wireless one, I'll go for that wireless one. Then for building the computer itself, I need a cabinet. That cabinet will be decided based on which processor I'm going to use. Processor decides which motherboard I'm going to use. That will define which cabinet I'm going to use. All related things. Cabinet comes up with a power supply unit or SMPS built into it. So that is where it has a dependency on which motherboard and which processor you have. Power supply gives different power output for different types of processors and motherboards. Some processor require high power, some processors require low power, correct? Then you will decide how much RAM you need, how much storage you are going to need. So you just collect the things. You don't talk about how these things will be connected. You just talk about what all things are required. You will need some screws, some instruments like screwdriver and all. Okay, you just collect all the things which are going to be needed. Understood? Which thing will be connected where? How it will be connected? You don't talk about that. Now in terms of programming, when I say I'm looking to build the banking system, in banking system, I identify that there will be a there will be an object called as saving account. Now, when I talk about saving account, the minimum expectation from saving account is it must have a balance data item. Then it must have at least two operations or maybe three operations now with modern days requirement like deposit, withdraw and transfer. Correct. What logic goes into that? I will not be interested in it at the top level. I just know that, OK, the, the object must have these things. Minimum these things. Any original feature it is providing, that's OK at the end. But minimum, this is what I expect from it. Is it clear? Is it clear? Yes. One more example I have. We have an agenda. The PDF file has been shared with you. What is that agenda? Sharing the agenda is enough? With no training happening? No, it is not. Agenda is something which is just guiding you that what all things you are going to learn, correct? It doesn't mean that you have, you have learned everything. What is mentioned in the agenda, correct? Yes. Who will deliver that? What will be the mode of the delivery? Whether it is going to be offline session, online session. Whether it is going to be interactive session or one way session. Whether it is going to be uh, recorded session being played. This is a different thing, right? Depends on various other factors. Am I right? At the beginning, your managers were interested in identifying what is expected from the training. What all topics the attendees are supposed to learn because based on that, the work is going to be allotted to them. Yes or no?
Yes or no? Be quick. Yes, absolutely. So what is that agenda actually? Can I say agenda is the abstract or abstraction of the training program? Yeah. Is it required thing or not? Can the training start without agenda? It can, but what will be the effectiveness of it? How your managers will decide whether this training is useful for their people or not? Because if there is no agenda within the training, what is happening? No one knows. And once the training is finished, then only the candidates can tell, attendees can tell what they attended, what they learned. And after that, if managers find that, okay, only 1% or 10% of this content was relevant. Rest everything we didn't require. We required something else. Will that be an ideal situation? No. Absolutely not. The ideal situation is people should know what is going to happen. There has to be a plan in place, correct? And that's what abstraction is. I hope everyone understand what is abstraction. Yes. What do you think? Yes. For a trainer, abstraction is required or not? Yes. Why? Because yeah. it helps the trainer plan the session. What he is going to deliver and how he is going to deliver. Correct? And the outcome is more quality outcome, correct? Which is beneficial for both parties. Person who is delivering, person who is receiving. Yes or no? Yes. What is encapsulation? Here we have the object already implemented. During implementation, the object may have got lot many things implemented into it. Do all the details of that implementation need to be shared with the end user? Do the end user need to know all those details? Like if you're driving a car, do you need to know exactly how the engine is working from where the fuel is going in? What is happening with that fuel? How it is burning? How that piston is getting operated? At what speed the piston is getting operated? How the exhaust is up working? As a typical end user, do we need to know these? I hope everyone agrees if I say no. Correct? For whom these things will be interesting or who will be interested in these things? Someone who is manufacturing that object, building that object, right? Yes or no? Either building or repairing. Yes. We don't open the engine. We don't see exactly what is going on inside. As far as I am able to drive the car comfortably without any issues, it's working, it's getting driven. I am happy. Yes or no?
this whiteboard application itself if you understand as far as i am able to write on this whiteboard with different colored pens and all i am happy it's serving the purpose right i don't need to know exactly what code has been written for this i just need this interface where i can select the different options for the colors eraser option highlighter option select option undo redo options ruler if i am looking to draw some diagrams and then different other options over here in order to change the look and feel of this whiteboard i may want it to be completely white i may want it to be gray in color green in color or whatever so we do have something called as format background i may want to save this as some image file so i do have export option as well i may want to clear the whiteboard in single shot so i i do have clear canvas option as well this is enough right how the tools have been built how this button is created what code has been written am i interested as an end user in this until and unless i'm not creating the software or servicing the software i don't need to get into the details am i right yes that's where the encapsulation comes in show what the user is required to use don't show anything else so this is where we use the definition as hiding or maybe other way around i can say showing the required details and hiding others internal implementation basically is supposed to be hidden so that we have controlled access to our object like when i talk about bank account we discussed about balance we discussed about the operations like deposit withdraw transfer in any case do you think i should have the direct access to balance to modify it i cannot modify balance directly right yeah my deposit withdraw transfer option will basically get the balance updated yes or no yes so that's where i need to put restriction correct yeah also when i am checking the balance don't you think i should check whether the right user is asking for the balance or not if a person who is not a customer of that bank should he be allowed to check the balance no and when customer is checking the balance don't you think i should check for his id to which some customer id or some bank account number is linked of course yes because i need to show him the balance of his own account yes or no yeah that's where i need to hide some details right what i am doing behind scenes i need not tell the customer i just say that okay this is what you ask this is what it is you give me the input from outside i'll validate that first and then i'll give you the output you don't ask me how i got that output correct yes then comes inheritance what is it this is simple capability of an object to derive characteristics or i would just say state behavior 
and responsibility from other object based on some relationship. That relationship could be parent child. That relationship could be ownership relationship also. Right? Like there is an object. There is another object. Let's say this is object one has got property like X, Y has got some operations like M1, M2. And then there is object two. Which is having a parent child relationship. So with this object two, by default will have the property X, Y method M1, M2 within it. Right and can add some of its own properties and methods further. The other case would be there is object three. It doesn't want these members to be uh, uh, used as its own members, but it want to own the object one itself. So object three has got just one property called as object one. And then object one has got X, Y, M1, M2 within it. This is something where we have ownership. And the first case is something where we say the relation is parent child relation. Yes. Yes, sir. Now this parent child relationship is referred to as is a relationship in. Object oriented world. Whereas this ownership relation is called as has a relationship. Do you get it? Can I say saving account is an account? Can I say employee is an uh, employee is a person? Can I say patient is a person? Yes. Then what is the relation between car and engine? Car is an engine or car has, a in, has an engine? Car is one object, engine is another object, right? Car has got the ownership of the engine. So when I say car is providing me an interface to accelerate, car just takes that input and hands it over to engine. Engine has got its own functionality to handle that acceleration message. Yes or no? Yes or no? Yes. The action is independent based on the input received from one object. The other object is doing its job, correct? Yeah. Not completely independent. It is connected. But the actual handling is independent. Yes. Accelerator directly is not racing the uh, car. I mean, it will not increase the speed of your wheels. Accelerator will send a message to engine. Engine will basically uh, increase its RPM and based on which the wheels connected to the engine will increase their RPM and hence the speed increases, correct? Correct? Yes. Can car inherit from engine instead of owning it? No, it won't work because both are two different kind of objects altogether. The car can be built without engine also. See the toy cars, they come with pedal as well. Just like the cycle, you can drive the uh, car also. Go to fun park. 
pedaling go kart options are also available right maybe the initial cars which were built were like that only yes or no interesting but it is a possible thing yes or no yes now that pedal itself was a different object it was a kind of a manual engine correct So I hope you understand what is inheritance. Capability of an object to derive state behavior responsibility from other object based on some relationship, where the relationship can be either of the two, is a or has a. Yes. has a relationship sometimes is also called as containment because one object contain another object you get it be quick yes what is polymorphism ability of an object to respond differently for the same message coming in from a different context this is easy to understand if we relate it to ourselves so if i call your name your response will be different if your manager calls your name your response will be slightly different because your manager is your boss if someone from the family calls you again based on which member of the family is calling you your parents your response will be different your siblings the response will be different again within siblings if the person is uh, older than you or younger than you the response will be different if your friend calls you your response will be different i mean even the tone gets changed yes or no message is same it's your name that is being called upon but the way you respond your gestures your tone will depend on who has called you yes or no Yes. If your boss is calling you, you will be more respectful. If your parents are calling you, you will be respectful but little casual. If someone younger than you is calling you, you will will be mostly casual, right? If it is your friend, probably you will be very very casual, extremely casual. Yes or no? Yes or no? Yes. And what is common across all these calls? It is your name. Everyone is calling you by your name, correct? Message coming in is absolutely same. Your response gets changed because the context is changed. Yes. now how it comes into the program so when i have inheritance relationship 
there is an object A, let's say class A, there is class B. There is a method in A called as M. There is a method in B called as M, which is overriding this. Okay. So, whether I create the object of A class and call M or I create the object of B class and then call M via 8 or if the object definition is like this A B equals to new B and then I call B dot M. Can you tell me whether in all the three cases, this is case one, this is case two, this is case three. Can you tell me in all the three cases, is the context same or different? Tell me quickly. Context is different. What about the message? Is the message same or different? Message same. Uh, same method being called with same set of parameters or values for the parameters, right? There is no difference in the message at all. Now, which one get called? Whether this one or this one? will be decided based on what is the context here, correct? Yeah. Correct or not? Yeah. This is what something what we call as polymorphic behavior or in general polymorphism. Now here there are some terms which come in like method overloading, method overriding, right? And usually you will find both are termed as polymorphic. Or both of them represent polymorphism. But with the latest studies, the things are revised. Method overloading is no more called as polymorphism. Because method overloading is like, I have an add method which takes in two integers. I have an add method which takes in one double value and one integer. There is another add method in the same class which takes in double values for both the parameters. If you closely watch it, the name though it is same, the message which is going in is different, right? Different types of values you are passing. This is not polymorphism, correct? Message has changed. As per the definition, the message has to be same for polymorphism. Yes or no? In this case, on the other hand, you can see the message is staying the same. Value may change, but the type of value should not change. Number of value should not change. Is that clear? Is that clear? Yes. Suppose in this particular meeting, there are two people with the name Sake, ex uh, excluding me. If I call just Sake, that will be ambiguous call. If I say Saket 1, uh, uh, we have pre-decided who is Saket 1 and who is Saket 2. So if I say Saket 1, only one of them will be responding. So message is changing, no? Yes, yes or no? Mm -hmm. That's what is happening with polymorph, uh, uh, method overloading. This is method overloading, whereas this is method overriding. So, Going forward, method overriding represents polymorphism. Method overloading is no more called as or no more considered as polymorphism. Because at the system level, after compilation, actually 
the system changes the names of all the three methods over here. Internally, the names are changed. Do you get it? Whereas here, the names are not changed. The names remain the same. So if names are not changed, they are remaining the same. That means message is same. If the names are changed by the system after compilation, they are not same. They are different. Got my point? Yes. OK, so. Probably here we need to go for the break as you have a session. Uh, after the break, when we resume, we will be looking at the implementation of all these things. Got it? Okay. Right, so I believe the town hall is finishing at 12.30. Is that right? Yes, supposedly. So we'll resume at 12.35 and we'll go until 1.15 or 1.20. And that time we will take the lunch break. So little adjustments we need to do today. Fine? Okay. Okay, so see you at 12.35. Okay.